Hello everyone, let me welcome all of you once again in this course of video lecture for organic chemistry. Now, up till now we have completed resonance, we have learned to draw resonating structure, we have learned to draw resonance, resonance hybrid and we have seen what is the implication of resonance and how resonance brings about stability. To make a quick recap, resonance decreases potential energy by decreasing the charge density and that brings about stability. When the, poten when the charge density decreases, the potential energy decreases as well and that brings about stability in the molecule. Resonance decreases charge density by spreading up the charge throughout the molecule. That's what resonance does. So it brings about stability, that's one thing. And there are another um, huge amount of other implications of resonance and to learn it one by one we'll start about with this problem. Now we are at the stage where partially we'll be starting reactions, uh, somewhat not in full fledged but we'll start some kind of reactions and here I present to you the first reaction of our course. Suppose I have this intermediates in our system, I have put bromide ion somehow in that system as well. So this bromide ion will approach this V plus due to columbic force of electrostatic attraction and they will result in formation of a bond. So C Br bond will, establish, uh, will be formed and uh, you will have finally a neutral compound. Now the statement of the problem is how many possible compounds will you get? The question is how many possible products will you get? Now uh, if, if you look at this intermediate, the charge seems to be at one carbon. So obviously if I, if I suppose I, I number this as 1, 2, 3 and 4, then the charge is on C2. So bromide ion will come and attack. Attack is a term very, very frequently used in organic and attacking means you are firing. You are firing through electronic gun. That is attacking here. Attacking means you are putting your electron into the empty orbital. When a species approaches another atom and sheds its electron into its orbital, that is called attacking. Attacking in a sense, we have electronic gun and we are putting our electrons into the empty orbital, that's called attacking. So bromide ion will come and attack C2 because C2 is having plus charge and will result in formation of a compound. That will be... That will be 3 bromo but one in. So this is, will, this is one of the compounds of course and this is a compound that will be formed as a result of this reaction. But this is not the only compound that will be formed as a result of this reaction because the charge is seemed to be at C2 but, but after studying resonance we understand it very well that charge is not, at, is not static at C2. If you remember there is electronic high pressure between C4 and C3 and there is electronic vacuum at C2. So the system is unstable and this is not the hybrid, this is the hypothetical structure, this is a resonating structure, it cannot remain as it is. So what will happen is electronic density between C3 and C4 will move towards C2 and the charge will develop on C4. So in the previous lecture we have learned it, we have learned to draw resonating structure and if you draw the resonating structure of this intermediate, you will see that the charge appears on C4. So it jumps from C2 to C4, it comes on the alternate position from C2 to C4. So now the charge is at C4. So bromide ion which is in the system can attack C4 as well. And if bromide ion attacks C4, it will be bonded to C4. So this time you will have one bromo but 2 in. Previously you had 3 bromo bit 1 in. So you have these two possible products. Now you have these two possible products because there are two positions at which plus charge can exist at C2 and C4. If there are two positions at which plus charge can exist, there are, will be two possible products because they can, they can be attacking at two possible sites. Now this is the next level of application of resonance. You decide the number of products and you decide the major and minor products. We haven't seen how to decide major and minor. Now but all we understand up till now is the number of products can be decided on the basis of resonance. Because in this structure the charge seems to be at C2. In this structure the charge seems to be at C4. We know it very well that the charge will be shared between C2 and C4. So the charge will exist at both the positions at C2 and C4. So correspondingly you will have two products. 
to when resonance spreads of the charge then the charge uh, exists at different positions then you can have multiple products because the ta attacking can be done at different positions so this is another application of resonance where they ask you to identify the number of possible products now now here you can also observe why we learn to draw the resonating structure a resonance hybrid is the real structure but resonating structure help us in identifying the proper product. If you draw the resonance hybrid for th this intermediate by considering these two resonating structures, the, for drawing the resonance hybrid as we have seen before, first draw the basic skeleton of carbon without the charge, without the pi 1. Now look for charge. The charge is at C2 and C4. So some amount of charge will be at C2, some amount of charge will be at C4. Now you have only one pi 1. The one pi 1 will be between C4, 3 and C4 and it will be between C2 and C3 as well. So partial amount of that pi 1 will be at here and partial amount of pi 1 will be here. But this is a real hybrid. But we don't use hybrid for reactions. We use only resonating structures for the reaction because, you know, this partial bond and this partial charge, this is not a very friendly looking structure. Although this is real, but this is not kind of structures we are acquainted to. We are acquainted by these kinds of structures where, where you have either pure single bond or pure double bond and you have a pure unit of plus one charge. So for reactions we use hybrid. Uh, we don't use hybrid, we use resonating structures and that's why we studied resonating structures we didn't study, uh, and because it helps. In reactions we'll be using resonating structures although they are hypothetical but still they are, they, are, they, are, they are the structures that we, we are used to and when we make bond between B or minus we will be requiring pure plus one charge. This del plus cannot participate in reaction. So actually what happens, reaction takes place by this structure itself but when B or minus approaches this carbon having del plus then this carbon generates pure plus one charge. So the electrons shift towards this position so that this carbon has a pure plus one charge. So that is called electromeric effect, that is called field effect. In the field of bromide, bromide ion, this carbon will develop pure plus one charge. We will see this field effect later in this course. But for now, why we are using resonating structure is because it helps in visualizing, it helps in writing the structure. So although these structures are hypothetical, the charge do not exist on only one atom, it spreads up throughout the molecule. But still for the reactions, we'll be using resonating structures because it helps in writing the structure. But we have to understand this, if the charge has been shown at C2, that does not mean charge remains only at C2. You will do resonance of that charge, you will identify all the possible positions in which the charge can go and correspondingly you will identify all the possible products that can be formed. So this is how resonance apply here. In the another application of resonance, suppose I have been given, I have, I have been given any amide. Amide is compounds having this, this functional group, C double bond O and S2, they are called amides. Now I have been given any amide. Suppose I have been given this amide. And uh, the system in which amide was kept, I also added S plus in that amide. And they are asking us where this S plus will go. Now why they are asking us where this S plus will go? Because S plus will go somewhere. Why S plus will go somewhere? Because S plus is electron deficient. S plus, hydrogen used to have one electron. That one electron was also extracted out of it. So hydrogen is devoid of its electron. As such, S plus is having none of the electron. So S plus, to have a duplet, it, gains, it, it has to gain two electrons. So S plus will go somewhere to gain that electron. So they are asking where S plus will go. Now where S plus will go? To nitrogen or to oxygen? Because both of them have lone pair and both of them will offer can offer their lone pair to hydrogen. So as such, there are two options. There are two donor sites that can donate its lone pair to hydrogen, to uh, H plus ion. So, uh, prima facie, if you see uh, that uh, nitrogen is less electronegative than oxygen. More electronegative atom hold its electron tightly. So nitrogen seems to be a better base than oxygen. So we can be tempted to write the compound like this nitrogen donating its electron if nitrogen makes a bond with hydrogen from NS2 this will become NS3 and if nitrogen gives its electron the charge will develop on nitrogen so you may be tempted to write a 
product like this or you may be tempted to say that nitrogen is a donor site. Now if we draw the resonance, the resonating structure for this compound, how would we draw first of all? The first thing that you have to do is you have to bring an empty orbital adjacent to a completely filled orbital and that's what we have been doing. Now this, and we have talked in the previous lectures that a lone pair is as good as negative charge in terms of number of electrons. Both have two electrons in the orbital. Now this nitrogen orbital has two electrons. If we empty up the adjacent orbital, orbital of adjacent atom, that is carbon, then you will have an empty orbital adjacent to completely filled orbital and there will result in formation of a bond. So all I have to do is I have to empty up the orbital of carbon because you have a completely filled orbital adjacent to carbon that is nitrogen. So what I did is I put both the electron of this bond to the oxygen so the orbital of carbon will get emptied up. In turn oxygen will get a negative charge because the bond has two electrons, one of the carbon, one of the electron is of carbon and that electron also went to the orbital of oxygen. So oxygen gives electron from outer source, oxygen has a minus charge. Now you have a bond. When you have a bond, the nitrogen gave one of the electrons to the empty orbital of carbon. So both of them have one one and they result in overlapping and they result in formation of a bond. But one of the electrons from the nitrogen moves into the orbital of carbon. So nitrogen loses one of the electrons. So nitrogen must have a plus one unit of charge. As we know that the charge cannot be created. This compound was neutral. So all the RS needs to be neutral for conservation of charge. So overall this is also neutral plus minus neutralizes. So this is the next RS. If you write the hybrid then for the writing the hybrid, just draw basic structure. Don't draw charge, don't draw pi bonds. Now look for charge. Look at oxygen. In one of the RS, oxygen is neutral. In one of the RS, RS oxygen has pure one unit of negative charge. Now these two are going to contribute in the hybrid and these two will have a character in the hybrid. So hybrid will look like this, will look also like this, but it will not look exactly like any one of these. So it will lie between these two and this is the zero charge, this is minus one charge. So it will be between these two. So that means it will have some fraction of minus charge. Neither neutral, neither completely negative charge, del negative. Similarly, if you look at nitrogen, nitrogen is neutral, nitrogen is having plus charge. So nitrogen will have a del net positive charge. If you look at this position here, you have a pure single bond, you have, you have a pure double bond. It will neither be a single bond, neither a double bond in between these two. Here if you look, it's, there's a pure double bond, here you have a pure single bond, neither you have a single bond nor you have a double bond really between these two. So this is how the hybrid will look like. And it is evidently, evidently clear from here, if you look at the hybrid, the first thing that you must appreciate, hybrid gives us the real distribution of electron in the molecule. And the real distribution is such that nitrogen has plus charge and oxygen has minus charge on this. So nitrogen has plus charge polarity, oxygen has minus charge polarity. If you look what we have done is we have pumped the electron of nitrogen towards oxygen. So the electron of nitrogen has gone away into the orbital of oxygen. Oxygen is having minus charge. This is called resonance. Resonance gives us the idea of the real distribution of electronic wave inside the molecule. And that real distribution is such that oxygen end is, is, is electron rich and nitrogen end is electron, de electron deficient. Now if uh, electron deficient species has been entered into the system, obviously it will go to the electron rich end that is oxygen. Now the lesson that we have to learn and we have to learn very quickly is resonance has to be the focal point of your thinking. Whenever you will start thinking in organic chemistry, you will start from resonance, not from inductive, not from hyperconjugation, not from electronegativity, not from the solvent of the effect, not from any other effect. Resonance is the dominating factor. Resonance is the factor that decides the pathway of the reaction, that decides everything in organic chemistry. If anything is asked, if someone asks where this S plus will go, draw the resonating structures, draw the hybrid, look the hy at the, in the hybrid where you have a electron rich and where you have electron deficient and, and we'll get your answer. We have drawn the hybrid, we look from here very carefully, very clearly that the oxygen is having electron, oxygen is electron rich and so obviously S plus will go to oxygen not at hydro, nitrogen. So what we drew on the basis of electronegativity is wrong. Actually nitrogen is electron deficient as we can see in this hybrid structure. So the S plus will not go to oxygen, it will go to nitrogen.